the closest I came to winding up dead was the night that I punched Russell Crowe, the gladiator in the head. Hey, hey, hey. well, this is uh, August 4th there, and let's get back doing these videos, get them up and running again. I know you've been waiting for them. This is the after fight afterthought on the Juan Manuel Marquez Juan Diaz fight. Battle of two to become Juan part two. Dos, zwei, you know, part two. And uh, what I do in these is I go over the winner, the after fight, and the loser, the afterthought. I go beginning the fight, during the fight, after the fight. On all three, uh, for both fighters. And going into the after fight, obviously, we have Juan Manuel Marquez, who was coming in. A lot of questions. He's old. He's washed up. He can't do it anymore. Do you see the beating Mayweather gave him? Oh, he was losing the fight when he fought Diaz the last time and got lucky and got the knockout. And, you know, there are a lot of questions coming into that fight, or into this fight. Did he have it anymore? Was he, in fact, washed up? And we found out, going after that, going into the fight, that that wasn't the case. He handled his business, counterpunching, clean, crisp, just as good as he ever was. Going in there, and he handled Diaz. The fight was not even close. And coming out of that, going through, I, he fought through the swelling on the eye, never seemed to bother him, landed those crisp right hands over the top. I mean, he looked like a rejuvenated fighter. And in that, you realize, wow, 135 is a great weight for him. And he's a great fighter. There are a lot of fighters that decided and tried their hand at the higher weights but could, can't really do it. And, you know, Archie Moore, you know, tried to tried to go up to heavyweight, didn't really work out that well, got blasted by some dudes. Anyway, you know, you, ha you have those fighters. Even uh, Sugar Ray Robinson had his limit at light heavy. You know, he couldn't go up to heavy. You know, so all the great fighters have that limit. And... Marquez found his, and that was 147, and he said, stay, man, this ain't it for me, you know, and he dropped back down and did amazing, and the one thing that you have to ask, the one thing that needs to be asked is, why isn't he getting a rematch with Pacquiao? This is the biggest uh, thing out there, I mean, aside from Pacquiao fighting Mayweather, this is the biggest out there. They had a draw in the first fight, the, uh, Pretty much everybody thought that he won the second fight, the split decision that he lost to Pacquiao, I mean the Associated Press. The only people that really saw Pacquiao win in the fight, aside from the, the three judges overall around ringside, were the Philippine newspapers and stuff like that. There really wasn't any um, stateside or around the world that saw Pacquiao win that fight. So why isn't Marquez the one getting the shot. I mean, he just fought, you know, he fought, you know, it's August, September, October, you know, going into November, almost four months between the fights. Why wouldn't he get the shot? Why does, you know, why is he getting passed up and passed over? Why is there not a rematch? Why hasn't there been, even though it's, he's more than proven worthy of a rematch? I mean, there's been fighters that got rematches for far less you know, Juan Diaz as one. You know, I mean, he got knocked out. So, and he got a rematch. But, yet, Marquez doesn't get the rematch, and that's a shame. At 135, he is as solid as ever in, the, in that division. And anybody that wants to come up and challenge him at 135 is going to have their hands full. And that's anybody. And he deserves the Pacquiao fight, not the Margot Cheeto getting it. Okay. Going over to the afterthought, you have Juan Diaz, who lost four of his last six fights, or three of his last six going into this one, and should have been four of his last six anyway. Coming off losses to Marquez, the knockout, he had lost to Nate Campbell, he had lost uh, to Malinagi, and some people arguably thought he lost twice to Malinagi. And he's coming in, and this is the it for him. If he wins this fight, it's highly possible he continues in, in the boxing field. If he loses this fight, then he's looking at going into becoming a lawyer. Very bright kid. 
So going into this, he knows he's not an A-list fighter. He knows this. I mean, he's not stupid. He knows that he can't beat the absolute best, but he's going to go in there and give it a shot. He saw what happened to Marquez. Everybody's pumping him up saying Marquez is shot. He's a done fighter. He doesn't stand a chance. So he goes in thinking, hey, and then he gets smacked around for 12 rounds, you know. So in that, he realized then that he's going to be a lawyer. You know, he's a solid B fighter. Took his shot, you know, and and in the end, he lost to any B plus or A A list fighter that he ever fought. So going into that, the way I see Diaz, I don't see Diaz really fighting again unless it's strictly for money. I um, I would see him going and continuing his career in in the as a lawyer, you know, in the business side of it, not in the ring. So, and, and it's sad to see he seemed like a good guy. But, you know, a lot of times good guys don't finish first in boxing. You know? So, that's, that's it with him. I mean, it's, he's pretty much done. It's, 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 it's over. And Marquez, you know, Aram needs to grow a sack and sign the Pacquiao Marquez 3. Not that crap that's going on. And the other thing. All right, wait. Well, it's my after fight afterthought. Please comment, rate, subscribe if you like. Go to the, my link that's like right there, and uh, get on that. It'll be awesome. Looking forward to hearing from you and for all you new uh, subscribers and everything. All right, keep punching. All right, wait. Well, hey, this is a big ragu. I'm out.